Jeopardy, Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Jeopardy is a unique American quiz show that features trivia in history, literature, the arts, culture, science, sports, geography, wordplay, and more. The show is famous for its unusual answer and question format, which requires contestants to phrase their responses in question form, having been presented with clues. The first episode of the show was aired on March 30, 1964, and went through different stages as a daytime series or a nighttime show. On September 10, 1984, Jeopardy! returned as a daily series with Alex Trebek as host and has been on ever since. Hoy, Monday, 9 a.m. This Mexican morning show, recorded live in front of an audience, is broadcast in Mexico, the United States, Central and South America, and parts of Europe. A team of hosts offer family-oriented entertainment. On today's program, the guest chef cooks up some Peruvian shrimp, and a prosperous businessman gives advice to members of the audience. National Geographic Channel, Thursday, 8 p.m. The National Geographic Channel is a television channel that features documentaries about science and technology, animals and nature, exploration and culture, produced by the National Geographic Society. It provides authentic and inspiring content for different age groups of viewers. The channel is dedicated to sharing factual knowledge and promoting genuine interest in our world, in an innovative and entertaining manner. National Geographic Channel was originally launched in the Middle East in 1998, followed by the National Geographic Adventure in 2007, National Geographic Wild in 2008, and National Geographic Abu Dhabi in 2009. Today, it is available in 25 languages in over 143 countries. CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, Thursday, 9 p.m. CSI is an American crime drama about a team of forensic scientists who investigate mysterious and unusual deaths. In tonight's episode, Grissom, Stokes, and Brown take on the puzzling case of a jogger killed in a park. At first, the team suspects it is a strange accident, but they eventually discover that someone has been plotting a series of disturbing crimes. Top Gear, Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Top Gear is an award-winning British television series about cars. It was originally launched as a conventional motoring magazine show. Since its relaunch in 2002, the new version has developed its own humorous style. The program is estimated to have about 350 million viewers worldwide. The show has received acclaim for its style and presentation, as well as criticism for its content and some of the cutting comments made by presenters. It remains, however, one of the most popular motoring series worldwide. Sasuke, Wednesday, 8 p.m. This popular Japanese sports entertainment program airs twice a year. Each three-hour special covers an entire competition in which 100 fighters and athletes compete in one of the most challenging physical contests imaginable. The contestants attempt to complete four levels of increasingly difficult obstacle courses to win the title of Ninja Warrior.
What are you watching? That game show with the teams of cooks. You know, the one where contestants need to prepare a four-course meal as a team, plate it, and serve it to the judges. Why would anyone want to compete in this kind of show? What do they get out of it? I don't know how you can watch this stuff. It's boring. I get a kick out of it. Look, he's going to decorate that dish with flowers. I can't believe he's going to put flowers on a meat dish. That's crazy. Why don't we turn off the TV and do something else? No way. Don't touch that remote. It bugs me to watch this. They pretend to be top chefs, but I'm positive they won't be allowed to do more than fry a couple of eggs after the end of this show. And they also pretend to be all friendly with each other. I don't know. Some of them seem to know what they're doing. I'm telling you, this contestant there is waiting for a chance to show off. He doesn't care about his teammates. He's in it to win for himself. Relax. It's just a TV show. Come on, we're wasting our time watching this stuff. Don't be such a couch potato. What do you say we go shopping? Nah, there's another game show on right after this. One, I'm not gonna let any of that stop me. Two, there's no question in my mind that you're gonna overcome all your problems. Three, you're gonna be answering questions. Four, I want to congratulate you. Five, I want to take a minute to say thank you. Six, we want to prove that hard work pays off. A brief overview of the history of television. Television was not invented overnight by a single person. The work of many people over a number of decades contributed to its evolution. In the early days, two distinct schools of thought in technology influenced different researchers and the course of their investigation. The first one was based on the technology of Paul Nipkow's rotating disks that supported a mechanical television system, and the second one on an electronic television system that used a cathode ray tube developed independently by two inventors, Campbell Swinton and Rosing. Paul Nipkow, 1860-1940, who invented the Nipkow disk in 1884, was the first person to discover the scanning principle that allowed small portions of an image to be analyzed and transmitted. However, it is unclear whether Nipkow actually built a working prototype of his television system. Electronic television is based on the development of the cathode ray tube, which can still be found in modern television sets. Philo Farnsworth, 1906 to 1971, was the first inventor to transmit a television image, a dollar sign, using the dissector tube, which is the basis of all current electronic televisions. 
The American engineer started experimenting with electricity when he was 12, when he built an electric motor and produced an electric washing machine. He was still in high school when he conceived of his ideas for television. A lot of people wrongly believe that color television is a recent idea. In actual fact, the earliest proposal for color television was patented in 1904, while in 1925, Zworykin filed his proposal for an all-electronic color television system. Commercial broadcasting, however, started in the early 50s, a quarter of a century later. John Baird, 1888-1946, is a researcher who is best remembered for inventing a mechanical television system based on Nipkow's scanning disk idea. Actually, his work included a number of technological milestones in the history of television. He created the first televised pictures of objects in motion, 1924, the first televised human face, 1925, color television, 1928, stereoscopic television, and television by infrared light that were presented and demonstrated before the 1930s. Vladimir Zworkin, 1889-1982, the inventor of iconoscope, a transmission device, as well as the kinescope, i.e. the cathode ray tube, in 1929, was one of the first to demonstrate a television system with all the features of modern television, otherwise called the tube. Most people in Britain that use the word tube to refer to television fail to make the connection between the television set and the cathode ray tube. Nor do people stop and think about the meaning of the word television, which refers to the transmission of images over a distance. In 1929, Zworkin became the Director of Electronic Research at Radio Corporation of America, RCA, and was later promoted to Vice President in 1947. Zworkin invented many devices, including the scintillation counter, a device for measuring radioactivity. He held more than 80 patents and received numerous awards for his work. Lewis W. Parker patented the Intercarrier Sound System in 1948, which is now used in all television receivers in the world. Without it, televisions would probably have been too costly for most people. The plasma display monitor was invented in July 1964 by professors Bitzer and Slotow and their graduate student, Robert Wilson. However, successful plasma television became feasible later, after the development of digital and other technologies. A factor that delayed the commercial development of plasma display was connected with LCD, or liquid crystal displays, which made flat-screen television possible. This minimized one of the advantages of plasma television in terms of a flat screen with an improved image. So it has taken a lot longer for plasma display to become more widely acceptable and accessible. Until recently, a plasma television screen was regarded to some extent as a symbol of affluence or status along with other possessions. Now, a new development is affecting communication and media further namely that of web or internet television. When internet access is available, along with adequate hardware, more and more viewers appear to be switching over to their laptops or desktops to watch films and other programs. Television sets are connected, allowing access to digital channels. The key word seems to be access. It is quick access and options that determine the popularity and, consequently, the commercial success of a medium. Television has so far been fairly well established. It remains to be seen how digital technology will affect its evolution in the future. A Terrifying Adventure on Water
Moby Dick, 1956, directed by John Huston and starring Gregory Peck, Richard Basehart, and Leo Jen, is a TV fantasy film adapted from the best-selling novel by Herman Melville. The story takes place in 19th century England on a whaling ship. The captain of the ship is Captain Ahab. Ahab has a fantastic story to tell about a great white whale which mutilated his body and almost killed him on a previous voyage. Now the captain leads his men back into the sea to take revenge. However, Ahab becomes so obsessed with vengeance that he makes some very bad decisions. The TV film takes us on a grand adventure over the waves as Captain Ahab and his crew seeks out the great sea mammal. As Ahab becomes more and more consumed by hatred, his doomed men are flung into dangerous situations. Does Captain Ahab eventually find the big whale? To find out, you will have to watch the film. If you choose to watch one film version of the novel Moby Dick, you should choose this 1956 version. The acting is good, it is well directed, and the use of color and imagery is superb. I think it is far superior to more recently released TV film versions. Everyone who read the book and those who enjoy adventure and tales of great battles between man and beast should see this TV film. I definitely recommend it as one of the best of our times. It is staggeringly good.